All right, get started. So it's February 22nd, 2024. This is sixth scale. All right. All right, Ole, I think you added these. So we've got some PRs you're working on. Um, actually, no, that's um that's just six scale related PRs in flight. So the first okay. one um is fixing some um um errors in uh, phase transition timestamps. So that was a PR in the release earlier, which refactored uh, all the metrics. So the idea was that um, if, if you scroll down, I think um, that PR is mentioned. Yeah, the reason. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So the idea was that um, they're moving all the metrics into um, a different location. And in that process, uh, one of the metrics um, phase transition timestamps was broken uh, because we had okay. um, a different um, histogram bucket and things like that. So that was the reason why we were seeing um, <clears throat> the the graphs for VMI go from around um, 15 to all the way to 10. Um, so our our graphs actually caught this particular uh, PR and, and through the times we found I found out that um, it is this PR that's causing problems. And um, yeah, we, we had a fix. So this is another example. Um, you know, our graphs finding issues in, in the um, release. And this turned out, um, I've convinced that this is a release blocker because without this fix, this release will not ship the ship the phase transition timestamps. Yeah, we definitely need it. Yep, I agree. Okay, so it looks like this is gonna get, looks like this is gonna get in. Okay, good, it's approved. Okay, good. So I think then, um, all right, good. this is being handled. All right, that's the first one. What's the second one? Yeah, so, um, the second one is the perf scale load generator. It's uh, it is panicking because there is another library which is uh, which is declaring that v flag v for verbose um, flag um, a, when we import it. So that's why the PR is to change the v to um, explicit um, hyphen verbose. And that should avoid the panic, and you know we'll we'll get the we'll get better runs from that. Okay. Yeah, I, even this one is approved, and um, it should get in soon. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. That's excellent. Thanks. Okay. Good stuff. All right. Thanks for handling this. Okay, you want to talk about Quark? Yeah, so I think the agenda is slightly old. That was last week. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I had a pull request out. Uh, what I realized is that most of the uh, manifests that are generated in may make a cluster sync or make cluster up and then make cluster sync. Uh, they are generated through a templateizer, which is a Go binary. And then you provide all the configuration flags to that um, binary, and then it will generate the YAML for you. Um, so the first step is generate that YAML and then, then um, you know make the cluster install that YAML and things like that. Now, in those cases, that is required because there is a lot of configuration to be handled. Uh, so it's required to do that on the fly. However, when we install um, Quark, all of our YAMLs are coming directly from an upstream URL, right? Mm -hmm. um, so whatever is the latest release of Quark, um, we'll just go ahead and install it. So that's, that's one set of YAML. And then the second set of YAML is, um, installing the VMI related things on top of it. So um, 
things that that were present that we walked through in the previous call in the cube word demo part of of um quark repository so the stage um you know the the additional r back and things like that so long story short all of those are very static and i don't see i probably don't see a need to um, make it dynamic and so i was just wondering if we can you know uh, implement um, static yamls inside of cube world um, or make cluster sync and and you know make it work that way however um from that point, I think I have received uh, feedback on, on this PR that instead of calling, instead of making this part of KubeWord KubeWord, we can make it part of uh, KubeWord CI. So even there, they have a make cluster up and make cluster sync. So whenever this is installed in, in, in CI, we will get, um, you know, um, we, we will get Quark installed on, on the end-to-end -end test. Okay. Yeah, the, there's the, uh, although this will have a slight problem, I'm just realizing while while I was speaking um, that if you do want to run the end-to-end -end test in your local environment, you will have to first, you know, deploy the cluster using make cluster up in KubeWord, then go to CI repository, KubeWord CI repository, then run make cluster up, um, using this to deploy quark and then come back to run an end-to-end -end test so i think it'll be it'll not be a great user experience um running end-to-end -end tests locally if we do go to keyboard ci and this is because of this these these static templates that we that yeah. You don't want to support these in repo. Yeah, right now in the repo there are there are no static templates. Everything is dynamically generated. And yeah, I I don't know if it is explicitly because um we don't want to have static templates. I, I think the feedback was that Qbert CI was more appropriate place for it. I'm not one hundred percent sure if it is related to the. <clears throat> well, so we'll put, let me ask this question: If we if we were to put this into Qbert Qbert, then and we want to run this in Qbert CI, does that mean we also have to have the same patch in Qbert CI repo? That's a good question. I'm not sure about that. So then we. Yeah, that's that's something I'll have to find out. So here's what um, would be interesting to me. So if we, um, if we for whatever reason don't like static templates, I, I'm or we just have to deal with um, two different repos using two different static templates. It would be, I think, what would make sense is just let's put these templates, put these static templates somewhere else in Qvert. Let's just have a repo for just the static templates, and then we'll have. Our deploy or make recipes call into the into those uh, static templates, and we can do all sorts of things with like um, if we want to do like releases for those static templates or something. Then that might alleviate some of the problems here where we have to deal with because um, I, I think like to me it's not I I wouldn't get caught up with this like I think we should just put this put this somewhere and then let's get the make recipes in place in both places because I I agree that there's definitely use case that we should have this stuff locally within Kiver there's good reasons to want to do this mm -hmm. and and we also want in CI so I think that's how I would approach this I I think okay that's Lubo and something let's see if we can just have another repo we'll call it like you know Quark artifacts or something. And you know we can do all sorts of things with it. We can do releases from it or something if we want, if it even really needs that. And then um, we have both make recipes from both of these repos consuming it. Okay, yeah, I th I think that'll be a good workaround. Um, okay, sure. Yeah, let's see what let's see what Lugo says if he agrees. Okay.
And then what about this? This is your, uh, okay, this is your references. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay, for this one though, I what I want is for us to get too caught up. Like if we, if this is gonna become a problem, um, you know, let, let's just go with whatever is easier. But I mean, to me, I think, I think it should be easy for us to get this repo and we can have control of it. And then we we'll, we can change, you know, we can be the maintainers of Quark, the Quark templates. And then, then it makes things, I think, a lot easier for us where the make recipe should mostly remain the same. And we can change around the Quark templates with ease. So it, it might be good for a few different reasons. So let's, yeah, I think that's, I think it's a good direction. Let's, let's see if, um let's try and get on Lubo to see if the, he can create this for us. And then I think that should unblock everything here. Okay, sure. All right, so one dot two uh, benchmarks. So this is right. Yep. One point okay. two. So okay. uh, yeah, go ahead. So up until now, I think our um phase transition timestamps were broken because of the earlier discussed issue. Um mm -hmm. so I think for one point two we might we might be able to show a partial benchmarks on the transition timestamp and then the other scalability uh, benchmarks we can um, we can go take a look but yeah I, I i think we might need to get this one in soon yep um let me see do i have the one boy one oops it's gonna take Oh, we still have the one from last time. Okay. Um, no, this one is... closes. No, I think this one is different. This is still pending. Uh... Oh, this is the... Okay, let me see. Oh, Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> I was going to say we can copy the one from last time. And we'll... Yeah, I have, okay. I'll create it, actually. Don't worry. Um... Okay. Okay. Um, and then I I forgot I don't have the schedule off the top of my head. How much time? So let's see, December. So we're probably January, February, March. So what's it? March the release? Oh, uh, the the next release. I think they're planning um next week. Next if things go well. Okay. Okay. So we'll be. Okay. So we'll need to get it in this week then. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'll I'll work on that immediately, and then um, take on the other issue. Okay, sounds good, Eli. All right, good. All right, anything else? Um, any other topics? No, that's it. Okay, good. All right. So that's we got a bunch of things then. Okay, just let me know if you need any help on this stuff. Um, I'm gonna ping people or get get more attention on this stuff. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Alay. Right. Have a good day. Thank you. I'll see you.